Hi, welcome to Simple Confident Cooking. I'm Anna Darden. I'm so pleased you're joining us this evening. Uh, we're going to be making roux, which is the uh, thickening to a lot of really delicious sauces. And so we're going to start out with one of my favorites, which is macaroni and cheese. Because who doesn't love the childhood favorite? <laughs> so the basics for it is um, a fat, so butter or uh, shortening or lard or oil. It can be a lot of different things. Butter tastes the best, <laughs> in my opinion. So we're going to start out with equal parts of butter and flour. Oh, butter. <laughs> um, a lot of your butter at home is going to have these nifty little tablespoon marks. And so it's kind of an easy way to cut off a bit and know what you're, um, how much you're putting in there. And so you got to start with melting your butter. And then um, we're going to add in, I'm going to be making a couple cups here. Oops, here's a little one. So we'll do um, a couple cups of, uh, let's see, we'll start out with about four cups of butter and four cups of, uh, four tablespoons, sorry, of flour to go in here. Yeah, butter. And I've had my pan on for a minute, so it's a little darker than we would like, but that's okay. Uh, we don't have to be real precise with measuring on this, but um, we do want to have kind of similar similar parts to it so we've got the right proportion. So it's going to look a little bit like this. Feels like a Julia Child moment. It's a little darker than you want, but it's the same idea. <laughs> yes. And so this is uh, <laughs> almost. Uh, so this is what it's going to look like when you're um, at that point. It'll be looking about like this way. See if you can see that at home. And then we're going to add in the milk. So I have it back on my burner, but I have a gas stove here, so um, I actually have it off the heat. And we're just going to add in the milk. The really important part here is to add it in slowly and so that you can mix it in really well. And you can see that it thickens up quite quickly here. And so you want to um, not have too much heat, otherwise you're going to get little clumps. So you want to just um, kind of stir it so that it incorporates really well. And before I turn the heat back on, I want to make sure that there aren't any lumps in here. Okay, so now that we have this kind of mixed together here, we're going to add in more milk. So we're adding about a cup of milk to every two tablespoons of root, which is, would be equal parts two tablespoons of butter and two tablespoons of flour. So the standard recipe for it, <laughs> I'm not really a recipe girl, so I kind of just go for it, but the kind of traditional recipe for a roux would be two tablespoons of butter, two tablespoons of flour, and a cup of milk, or a cup of your liquid. So it could be a, um, a broth, it could be a lot of different things. So we're starting out with the milk, and it's a little bit darker than we would love to have here, but um, if you can see now on the, um, it's, it's real, uh, watery now, everything's really well incorporated. And so we're going to turn it back onto the heat for a little bit. And there's a really important thing you've got to do here, which is stir. <laughs> and a lot of times when you're going to be stirring, um, the common mistake that I see is swirling like this. This is not, this is not stirring. <laughs> this is just swirling the top layer. And so what happens is that underneath all that flour and butter that you've um, created, it's going to start settling and burning on the bottom. And so if you are not um, continually moving your whisk across the bottom of the pan, then it's going to start kind of separating and burning, and burned milk is about the worst, <laughs> worst tasting thing you can do. Um, if that happens, just immediately pour it off into a clean pan. Um, if you can save it just in time, you can kind of feel if your whisk is um, kind of catching at the bottom of the pan. It should be really easy to just glide across it. It shouldn't feel like any effort. Uh, it should be really easy to do. So I like to start out with just a little bit of um, milk and keep adding it in as I go because this way you can um, kind of judge better what your texture is that you want to end up with at the end. I'm planning to add a lot of cheese in here. So the important thing is to have a good texture that um, we're going to be able to 
add more milk and have it the right creamy consistency that you want. Some people like thicker macaroni and cheese and some people like it thinner. So um, I'm cooking right now at about a medium high heat. So on a coil burner, this would be a seven or eight. Um, on, this is a gas. <laughs> So that would be kind of towards the high end, but probably not all the way on high because milk can burn so quickly that um, don't want to get to that point that it's overcooked. Um, let's, let's see here. Great. So you can already see that it's starting to, it's just starting to come together and we're starting to get some light bubbles. That's exactly what we're looking for. And um, if I can grab a spoon here, let me show you what it should look like on your spoon. Um, see how it's just lightly kind of coating the spoon? That's exactly perfect because that's a really great consistency. It means that it has enough flour in there to hold up really well. So now what I'm gonna do is just take it off the heat. Um, I'm gonna grab a hot pad real quick. And what we'll do is we'll mix in our um, we're gonna mix in all of our cheeses now. So uh, first, we're gonna do, um, I did one at home earlier and I used a combination of aged Gouda, Parmesan, and mozzarella. The mozzarella makes it super creamy and really the cheesy stretchy that you love, but also gives it kind of a little bit more of a gourmet twist to it. I'm gonna do really kind of a home style, what we all love to eat as kids. Uh, so, um, I'm gonna start with a pub cheese and this is, um, kind of, uh, I don't even know how to describe it. It's just a really creamy cheese. And so of course it's gonna make this taste creamy and delicious. This one happens to have some peppers in it. And my grandmother always used kind of a cheese like this when she makes macaroni for us. Yeah, and so <laughs> that's my shout out to my Yaya because that's my childhood favorite. And then we're gonna add in um, some cheddar. This one's a Tillamook Extra Sharp Cheddar. And so this one, just keep kind of um, swirling it in here. And this is probably about two pounds, so maybe two to three cups of cheese here. And so we'll swirl this in. And then I'm gonna add some more mozzarella. It also is gonna give us a really creamy texture. And um, also it'll lighten the, the color a little bit too. So we'll add maybe, uh, maybe two cups of, of the mozzarella cheese in here. And I like to save some to go on the top too. I'm not gonna do it today um, just cause I don't have an oven to put this in to make it all nice and crunchy for you. Or, uh, but this will be really nice. Now you can see right now that the texture of this is getting really thick like this. So um, I'm gonna just add a little bit more milk in because I don't need it quite so thick. <laughs> and um, cause it's gonna get a lot thicker once we put it in the oven. And so we're gonna just thin it down just a little bit. And that's pretty much your cheese sauce that you're gonna, <laughs> gonna start with. So um, if you wanna add a little bit more pizzazz to it, you can add some chili pepper. I'm gonna add a little bit of a Spanish paprika. It just um, will give it kind of an orange flavor color. <laughs> and also will make um, it a little bit smokier in flavor. And I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, dried mustard too. <laughs> you can also use like um, a prepared mustard, like grape pepon, I like a lot. And uh, it has a little bit of vinegar in it, so depending on what cheeses you're putting in, you may or may not want to do that. And so that's gr basically the texture we're looking for. You can see that it's uh, really nice and creamy, but also has, um, it has some movement to it. So we're gonna pour in our noodles. And I made about a pound of pasta, but I maybe, I probably won't use the whole thing of it. I have, um, I always like to add the pasta into the sauce instead of the other way around, because the other way around, you may end up having too many noodles than you need for how much sauce you made. So if we just go ahead and put these straight into here, we can just um, kind of create the right consistency that we're looking for. And even now, if you see that maybe it's a little bit thicker than you wish it was, which it is in my case, <laughs> we're gonna add a little bit more milk to thin it down a little bit. So. 
put that in there and swirl it around a little bit more. And so with macaroni and cheese, because the cheese is also going to thicken it, and um, if you like to cook it in the oven like I do afterwards, um, it's going to continue to get even thicker as it cooks. So it's nice to start out with a little bit looser so it has, um, it's able to kind of drink up some of that moisture a little bit. Also, um, I like to use just different textures than the typical macaroni noodle. <laughs> Just my thing, but you don't want it to be totally as cooked as you would if you're making spaghetti or something. Um, it's called al dente, and it should be just kind of hard to, wait, easy to kind of push your finger into it, but it's not going to really easily fall apart. It's not, it's going to give, have a little bit of, um, still a little bit of grip to it, because when we put this in the oven, it's going to continue to cook. Wait. So <laughs> we're going to um, pour this into our baking dish. And that's the goodness we've all been waiting for. And um, what I would usually do with this is sprinkle it with some breadcrumbs and cheese on the top, and then that goes straight into the oven at about 400 degrees, and you can cook it for about half an hour until it's nice and bubbly for you. And, and once it's nice and bubbly, then you're all set. So we'll sprinkle a little cheese on the top um, I'm putting some more of the mozzarella here and I also had some of the really yummy cheese from the Parmesan left over and the aged Gouda so I'm going to put a little bit of that on here as well and um, that's just going to melt in and really give it a nice crunchy crust on the top. Who doesn't love burnt cheese? <laughs> it's not really burnt I guess, it's just kind of crunchy and delicious. And then we would just stick that right in the oven. Um, when I do the, um, the breadcrumbs, I like to cook them for just a minute in a saute pan and add some butter, a little bit of pepper, salt, and, um, and then put that on top just to kind of get it going a little bit. And then it'll actually absorb quite a bit of um, kind of oil from the cheese. So you don't have to get too crazy with the butter, but I, I like to start it out that way. And then when it comes out of the oven, we're going to have something like this. So let me switch over here. It's going to look a little something like this when it comes out of the oven. And I like to do um, just a kind of a regular bread crumb will work really well. This one I just used a baguette and um, kind of ripped it up a little bit and um, then tossed it in some butter, a little bit of, uh, this one has some truffle oil in it, so that's one of my favorite things to do. Yeah. And that's what you got. So now we're going to go and take the same concept on to the next level. We're going to do next a traditional gravy. So this is going to be what you do with Thanksgiving dinner, um, turkey gravy, uh, chicken gravy. It can be a vegetarian broth, whatever you want to start with. I roasted a chicken last night, and so um, that's what I started out with was, was chicken broth. That's what we're doing today. And in this case, we're going to get, let's see here. So I just, uh, every time I roast a chicken, I always keep all the bones, keep all the giblets, all of that goodness. And um, that makes a really fantastic broth. Just add some carrots, some celery, and um, cover it all in water. Pretty much good to go. <laughs> um, you can go to my Backyard Brunch page and you can see examples of broth on there too. Um, you can see from my broth here, there's kind of a fat layer on the top. I can just use that uh, as my starter instead of a butter. Um, so if I just even put a few tablespoons of this in here, that'll make a fantastic start and have really delicious flavor too. In this case, uh, we don't want to probably keep it on the heat for too long because we don't want it to burn. And, um, and then we'll add our flour in again. So again, it will be kind of equal parts that we'll use here. And as we stir it together, if you see um, like here, it's kind of looking a little bit clumpier. It doesn't have a really smooth consistency. So that's why it's nice to have sort of equal parts because then you have a better texture and it'll incorporate a little bit better. Uh, one 
problem that you can come across is it tasting a little bit floury. So by cooking it a little bit longer, your sauce, it's going to take that flavor out of it a little bit and help it to incorporate a little bit better. So we can just start putting this in here. And I'll add again a little bit at a time. So this is the same exact process we did with making the white sauce, except for this time around, we're doing a gravy. <laughs> and um, in this case, um, if your pan is a little bit too hot and you're having a uh, like little clumps that show up in your sauce, what you can do is you can actually pour it into a sieve and kind of use like a spatula or something to kind of clean that part out of it and start with a clear sauce and then add more into it. So another way to make a roux is to use a softened butter and mix in equal parts of flour. And then that way you can mix a little bit of that into your kind of in process sauce. That works really well to get the right texture. So we're gonna, okay. When I did the chicken yesterday, I put a little bit of a spice rub with a lot of smoked paprika and we used, um, what else did we put on there? We put some smoked chardonnay salt. My husband used to work for Bottega. So it's a, it's a Napa style salt <laughs> that we love. It works so good on roasted chicken because it kind of has that barbecue flavor between that and the smoked paprika. So my chicken broth today actually has a little bit of a smokiness to it too. Now you can see immediately as I put the sauce, see how it's starting to thicken? That will burn in about 30 seconds. So uh, we're gonna have to really quickly start incorporating it. And you wanna start off with a really slow heat so that um, you have a chance to incorporate all of your roux into your broth or your stock or whatever you're using for that. Um, so as I decided to do this show, I'm part of a supper club and the lovely people that I do supper club with, um, two of them are from Louisiana, <laughs> one of them is here tonight, oh. and um, <laughs> so the first thing they ask is like, oh, so you have to be doing gumbo, like, I'm from California, I'm not doing gumbo, <laughs> no, <laughs> but I love you. Uh, so the difference between, so there's a lot of different ranges of roux. You can start out with kind of a white roux, which is what you use for a white sauce, or a chicken stock, or a fish stock. Um, anything you want really light in color. Um, for Cajun cooking, they'll do kind of a brown to red to black sauce, and it's basically the same thing. You're gonna make your roux, your flour and water, uh, fl flour and fat, whatever that is, whatever combination you wanna use for that. But you're gonna cook it. Yeah, bacon, <laughs> got that coming up. And, uh, and so you're gonna just keep going with that and um, you, you cook it for basically the same amount of time, but you want a low heat and you want to cook it for like 40 minutes. You have to cook it for a long time to get that really rich color. And it's also going to have kind of a really nutty flavor to it as well. And so you can see now it's starting to just simmer at the top and that's perfect. That's how easy it is to make gravy. And we serve this right over some mashed potatoes, good old home style. <laughs> and that's, that's as easy as it gets. So let's, um, let me grab, let me grab another clean spoon here. So let me show you the texture on that. So one thing that you'll maybe notice that I do a lot is I use unsalted butter. A lot of times um, I don't like to use a pre-made broth because you can't control the salt in that. And so um, if you start out with something that's really salty, like salted butter, then you add a salty broth, and then you add, you know, onto that, you can't undo the salt unless you make it too thin by adding too much water. So by starting out with your own ingredients, you're able to control that balance a lot better and have a better outcome at the end. So that tastes pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't tasted it yet. It was hot when I put it away last night. So that's perfect. And you can see here too that it's just, it's coating the spoon. Uh, it's just, um, it's stained to it, but it also comes off really easy and it has a really nice gloss to it. So that's exactly what we're looking for here. So we're going to do one other type of a gravy, which is biscuits and gravy, kind of a favorite for um, a lot of breakfast. And in this case, 
We're going to start out a little bit differently. We're going to start out with some spicy Italian sausage. Who doesn't like spicy Italians, huh? And uh, <laughs> what <is his> name? <laughs> right? <laughs> James, are you Italian? <laughs> and so what I'll do is I'll just take a little slice down to the middle of the casing. So I like to get these from the um, butcher, and then just take out the casing. It's really easy to do, and um, and then that gives us just our our plain sausage to work with here, and. Um, See, I didn't cut this one as well as I did the other one. Now, if you're a vegetarian, well, let me, let me say it this way. When I'm using a pork sausage, you can already see in here, I don't know if you can tell on the TV, these uh, little white bits, that's a lot of fat that's in this sausage. So that's going to be our starter instead of using a butter or instead of using a um, lard or anything else you want to use. You already have that already built in here. So we're going to use that as our start and if we need a little bit more we'll add it in. So I like to make um, bacon in the oven. <laughs> it's my favorite way to do it. It's so much less of a mess. You can lay it out on a cookie sheet and as you, you cook it in the oven, maybe 400, 425 degrees for about 15, 20 minutes, it's going to render a lot of fat off of that. And so as you have that at the end of your bacon, pull the bacon off, save that liquid, and then what I do is I um, pour a little, put a paper towel over here and pour it through to get rid of any impurities. If you do it on the stove, a lot of times it'll burn, and it makes a really fantastic lard that you can use. So that's what this is, and if I have not enough uh, of fat in here, then I'll use some of that as well. So we're gonna turn this on to a little bit of heat and sort of break these up. We're doing home style cooking, so I'm just gonna break them up with my hands. I'm just gonna get in here, that's what I do. I'm not in a professional kitchen, so I can have a little bit of fun with it. <laughs> that's what I do if you come to my house. <laughs> uh, it's a little easier to break it up this way. And Meat likes to be gently handled, so this is what we're gonna do. Oh my. I didn't say it. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> Now I have this gorgeous studio audience this evening, so don't be shy. Ask me some questions while you're sitting there. <laughs> so I'm going to switch over from, you can ask questions anytime, don't be shy. Or if you're watching at home, please feel free. So I'm going to have this on to kind of a medium high heat. Is that a local core? This, I usually do this time. Um, I think it's from Sonoma, actually. Wonderful pig. <laughs> that we love. So how how crispy do you want the actual meat? Well, you can see right now that it's kind of a reddish color, and uh, we want it to get kind of brown because that's what you want in your biscuits and gravy to have that really rich. Um, flavor and you can see right now it's starting to bring a little bit of fat off of here for me. That's what I'm looking for. And the longer it cooks the more it's going to kind of separate the fat from the meat. This is one of my favorite tools in the kitchen let me just tell you. Um, my mother found one at a garage sale or something and she just swore by it. And so then I started looking everywhere on the planet for one at a garage sale. And I use this little spatula more than just about anything in my kitchen. Because it feels like you're working with your hand. You have so much control over it. And it's truly one of my favorite things in the kitchen. So you want to make sure all the red is gone out of the meat. And you're going to be looking for everything here to be a really lovely, uh, kind of a dark caramel okay. color. Hi, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. I just have a really quick question for you. Yes. So as a vegetarian, if I wanted to make a kind of a hearty gravy, is there something else I could add to like sausage? Can you have to kind of give me that meat? Yes. I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> so um, I like the, the Morning Star uh, sausages. I think work really well if you tumble those up. Uh, it's a really great vegetarian um, gluten kind of texture. And what I, what the difference is going to be like a really big important difference is that this is going to render off a lot of fat. So that's going to be a big part of my uh, my fat that I'm going to use for my roux. If you're using a vegetarian sausage, uh, they tend to be a lot lower in fat. 
And so you're going to start out with a, a traditional roux. You're going to start out with a mixture of flour and butter, kind of equal parts, and then um, add your crumbled sausage, vegetarian sausage, into that. And that's going to be your base that way. Yeah. Excellent question. So you can see here in the pan, can you see there's a little bit of the fat coming off of it now? It's starting to get a little bit darker in color. Oh, it smells like fennel. Mmm. Fennel and Calgary and chili, who doesn't love that? Great. So this is about exactly the texture I'm looking for, but um, it's not pulling off as much fat as I would love to have, so I'm going to use... <laughs> Yes, the fat. I know. <laughs> That's how I win a lot of hearts. So I'm going to use a little bit of my uh, my bacon fat here. <laughs> and that's just going to give me a little bit better, um, a little more to work with when I add my flour into here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in my couple of tablespoons of flour. And so we'll do, I probably have about three tablespoons of butter in here. And, um, and this will be mixing it with, so this um, kind of instead of just starting out with straight butter, you're going to instead be starting out with the rendered fat from here. And you want everything here to look like it's pretty well covered in flour. We could use a little bit more in here. And you can kind of tell because it's pretty loose still. These, um, And I don't want it quite that loose on the bottom. So we're going to add a little bit more, maybe like another tablespoon or so. And then we're going to add our milk in. And the great thing about starting out with a roux is that you can accomplish a really creamy texture without having to use a cream too. <laughs> so you can start out with a little lower, lower fat milk if you'd like to. Um, I'm using today one that's from Sonoma, it's local and um, this is my new obsession right now, I'll just be honest with you. <laughs> kind of takes milk to the next level and oh, it's just kind of delicious. So, Okay, now we'll mix this in and the same thing, we want to start slow, we want to start without too much heat on it. And um, as we swirl it in, you can kind of see how the milk is getting incorporated here. And then um, we're going to put the heat back on. See? And just slowly at first, you don't want to start off on super high heat or it'll, again, it'll be really easy to burn. And then just keep swirling it around until you get um, all your sides covered really well. Now if I just leave this alone, and I'm going to do it just to kind of demonstrate what I want to show you. <laughs> uh, so you can see how if I'm not moving it around, we're starting to get some darker areas on the top and that's kind of the fat separating to the top. And also if I move this even slightly, you can see how it's just instantly starts to stick to the bottom. And so if I was just kind of moving it around, that's just going to burn. <laughs> so you always want to stir and make sure you're always covering your bottom of the pan and swirling all the way around and go back and forth and just make sure you're really moving it around a lot. And we're going to add some more milk in here. And I just like to always add a little bit at a time. Don't put it all in right at the last minute. Otherwise, it's um, put too much in at once. It's really easy to get clumps. And just do a little bit at a time. So it's easier. So we'll just keep uh, stirring this around until it gets nice and thick. And then we'll serve it with biscuits. That's what we do. And um, this, this basic sauce of doing a, like a, a white sauce or doing a, a gravy is the source of so many recipes. So a white sauce, which is what we started off with with the macaroni and cheese, of having your um, equal parts of butter and flour and then also to a cup of um, milk. That's, that is the same thing you're going to do if you want to make fettuccine or you want to make chicken pot pie. Um, I like, in my family we make eggs goldenrod, which is a white sauce with egg whites in it. We do it on a toasted um, uh, toasted sourdough bread. <laughs> and that's, that's one of our, that's one of our um, holiday things that grandma always makes for us that we love. And um, that's what we do. We'll add a little bit more in here. We have a nice um, 
golden color and it's coming together really good. Yeah. <laughs> Thomas, it means you have a question probably. Are you ignoring Thomas? <laughs> Where's the gumbo? Thomas, Thomas is going to be brought on to make gumbo. He's the expert. I had his gumbo. I'm not making gumbo in front of him. Bring Chris. Bring Chris in the house. That's great. I will ask you a question. Yes. So do you ever use Teflon pans and then you would use like a silicone uh, spatula or do you always prefer metal to metal? I always prefer metal to metal. Uh, not always eggs. I like my, um, my Teflon. I have an alkaline one that I love for eggs. Um, the reason why is because you build up a lot of really amazing flavor on the bottom of the pan. And it, with the Teflon surface, it's smooth and slippery, and therefore you don't get that same flavor. So a lot of like deglazing of the pan and things where you want to pull that flavor off the bottom. Um, you can certainly use uh, <laughs> certainly you can use a, a nonstick pan. They work really well, and um, they, I think a lot of people love them. I just personally don't because I, I find that I, I really like um, feeling the texture of it. This, if I was making this in a nonstick pan, it slips around a lot, and it's harder to feel when it's ready how, how thick it is and um, judge the texture a little bit for me. So that's why I don't love it as much. <laughs> that's my that's my personal opinion, and um, but I do I use I, I like these um, these are from William Sonoma, and I really love to use them there because they can they're heat resistant up to like 500 degrees or something. I haven't burned one yet, so they can go pretty hot, <laughs> and they work really well too for just um, pushing it around and seeing seeing where you're at on that. So that's what we do here. Now, one last thing I want to make sure that you're aware of. <laughs> this is really important. Um, Christmas dinner, we were over at my darling friend's house making macaroni and cheese. And we did it that night. We did the most delicious one with brie. And uh, we did like a truffle brie. Or the, um, oh my god, it was so good. And, <laughs> and then we did a, like a, a really creamy mozzarella with it. It was so good. So I'm stirring, stirring, stirring my sauce. And right at the point where you're going to make sure, like it's going to burn if you mess it up. <laughs> Uh, this my little handy spatula that my sweet friend had it broke and so then all these little bits were falling off of it here and so then it, well, it didn't work so well and then we had to switch to a fork really fast and swirl as fast as we could so this is why it's really important to start out with not only really great ingredients but really good quality um, Utensils that you're cooking with, your tools, yes. And so a good stainless steel one that's heavy and uh, good quality, well made. Um, it'll last you forever. It'll last your lifetime. Um, just really worthwhile to have a good one here. Can we see your sexy biscuits? Or like, yeah. Yes, sexy biscuits. You have your biscuits. I have a question. Show them the biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's what we have to do. We just have our little biscuits here, and um, here's a little spoon. This spoon I stole from my sister-in-law. I'm not giving it back. It's so good. Is there any reason to ever use scalded milk when you're making the roux? You know, if you start out with a warmer milk, it doesn't burn quite as easily. It's easier to incorp incorporate some time into your roux. So some people do like to start with a warm milk. Um, I find that if you turn it off the heat and kind of start with both of them at a room temperature, it works really well and I like to save a step of heating the milk if I don't need to. So that's that's why I like to, if you kind of have them at the same temperature, that's that's a good thing to do. Can you pour that over all the biscuits? Yes. Ah. Can you pour that over all the biscuits? This, is, this is all, that's what I would do, I just eat it like that for breakfast. That's great. Thank you all so much for coming this evening. I'm so glad that you could join us and be here again next month.